Hello, this is video 71. It's called pressure in a fluid. Mostly in this video I'll be talking about how pressure varies with depth. You probably know from experience or just watching movies, if you haven't been scuba diving, that when you go deep into the water that the pressure increases. You need special equipment if you're going to go deep enough because of all that pressure. So what do you think causes the extra pressure as you go deeper into a liquid or into the ocean? So hopefully you said that you have that extra pressure because you have more weight above you. And we talked about the fact that the weight of a fluid exerts pressure. Because remember, pressure is force per area. We talked about in a previous video that was called weight due to the pressure due to the weight of a fluid, that this pressure was equal to rho gh. So be sure to look back at that video if you don't know where the rho gh comes from. This is the pressure due to the weight of a fluid. So if you are in a liquid, let's say that you're swimming, and let's pretend this is not a glass of water, but let's pretend this is the ocean, then you know that if you're down here, you're going to feel a lot more pressure than if you're up here. And that's because when you're down here, you have all that weight above you, all that liquid above you. But if you're here, you just have this much liquid above you. So that extra weight exerts more pressure. Now what about if I told you that instead of being in fresh water, let's pretend this is our ocean here, a very easy to draw ocean, then now you are at the same depth here, but it's seawater. This is all seawater instead of fresh water. In which one would you feel more pressure? In the fresh water here or in the seawater? Hopefully you said you'd feel more pressure in the seawater because seawater is more dense. When something is more dense, it has more weight per volume. So that means that the, the weight of water above you here is going to weigh more than the weight of water here. If it's going to weigh more for the seawater, that means it's going to exert more pressure. So this discussion shows us what is written on the left-hand side here, that the pressure in a fluid depends on the density of that fluid, the more dense, the more pressure, and the depth, the deeper you are, to more pressure. This equation here relates these ideas. P2, which is the pressure at the bottom of our fluid, is equal to P1, the pressure at the top, plus rho gh. What this equation is, is telling us is that if we know the pressure P1 right here at this location at the top, and we're trying to find the pressure P2 here, at the bottom. The pressure at the bottom is due to the weight of this fluid above us and we know the expression for the pressure due to the weight of this fluid is rho gh but also the pressure at number two here is due not only to this weight here but it's also due to all the pressure due to everything above that. And we're assuming in this diagram that the pressure above at the top is given to us. So when we're trying to find the pressure at the bottom, we're going to add the pressure at the top plus the additional pressure due to the weight of that fluid. So the last note about this equation here is that all points at the same depth must be at the same pressure. That's because if they're at the same depth, so it doesn't matter if the point is here or here, then it's going to have the same weight of fluid pressing down on us. And it turns out that it really doesn't even matter the shape of the container. We'll see that in the next slide, but first let's do an example. This one is called pressure variation with depth. 
we have a cubical object 20 centimeters on a side is completely immersed in a fluid. The pressure at the top is given, 105 kilopascals, the pressure at the bottom. You notice that the pressure at the bottom is more because you have the extra weight of the fluid above you. It's 106.8 kilopascals. What's the density of the fluid? So you have to realize when you read this, if you visualize it, that you have a cubical object that is completely immersed you're given the pressure at the top right here that was called P1 and the pressure at the bottom P2. So you realize that these pressures are different because of that height of liquid, that difference in height here. That extra weight has additional pressure at the bottom. So we're going to write down our equation for how pressure varies with depth, P2 equals P1 plus rho GH. We're going to make sure we have defined everything. P1 was 105,000 pascals. Kilo is 1,000. P2 is 106,800 pascals. And then we need our H. H is always the height in between the two pressures that we know in this equation. So the height is going to be 0 0.2 meters, where I have converted 20 centimeters to meters, because there are 100 centimeters in a meter. Now we solve for our unknown variable, rho. It's a rho, not a p for density. It's going to be p2 minus p1, subtract the p1, and then divide by gh. When we do this, we're going to get 918 kilograms per meters cubed. So the density of this liquid is slightly smaller than the density of water.